always done stuff is we sort of fumbled through it. It's usually like using a one thing in this repetitive way until it starts to take on a different characteristic or you um, hear a, a sound in another, you know, out on the street or in another type of music and then you come up with some ass backwards way of trying to emulate something like that, like with a champagne bucket and a yeah, contact yeah, yeah. mic or broken tape machines or a guitar that's like, I mean, I, I imagine that most first year guitar students could teach me a ton about playing guitar. I, I don't know. So I think there's a very naive way that we kind of go about it. Mm. I don't think our sensibilities are naive, but I think that the way we approach it is pretty. <laughs> Ben and I grew up listening. I, at least, we're relate. We're brothers, so I feel like our parents just listened to like the oldie station. Our dad was really into like uh, they're like these like uh, television advertised like cassette compilations. <laughs> like, <laughs> Can you tell? Like Freedom Rock. Oh, and nice. Things like that, and he would always get all the time <laughs> life on. I just I remember those mostly from that, and then he got into bagpipe music. <laughs> Most of my sounds are on this like sampler. It's just like a MPC, you know, sampler. It's like probably what like Lincoln Park uses and shit like that. So <laughs> it's not that cool really at all. But you know, like I make all the sounds that go on it and stuff like that. <laughs> getting ready to you know start working on our next record uh, we kind of made the decision not to embark on like um, an LP project just because like we'd just done three records pretty fast and we wanted to kind of take it easy on ourselves and give ourselves some time to sort of like experiment with like new ways of working in the studio and stuff like that A friend of mine, Gavin Reeson, built this box for me. It's um, custom made sort of to my specifications and it's two filters and a sequencer. Just to make sounds. And then it's just kind of a series of different guitar effects. I mean, start off with getting a distortion pedal and realizing that you could get, um, that sometimes just like, touching the, the guitar cable and running through pedals and turning the knobs was more interesting sounding than the than what that you were playing on the guitar was. still I think has the most interesting sounds just like sonically for like pop music that's out there and still continues to be the as I see it dominant like pop idiom you know worldwide for like young people uh, there's, I guess there's only that on this one but I find like I listen to less and less music now than ever except for the radio and not I mean mostly just out of convenience so pretty much exclusively buy vinyl and then I pretty much exclusively don't pay for mp3s and <laughs> you know and I wouldn't expect that much different from other people you know and like I don't see it so much as like a problem I think it's kind of the same as having a cassette tape like in the 80s or something like that it's a lower quality it doesn't come with any artwork or anything like that and so it's like you know I think people that really want like the finished record will get it. A lot of what I do is just it's like a lot of processing, so I'll like make something on here, and I'll put it onto this kind of crappy 8-track that we have, and then I'll take that and kind of work with it again and put it onto like a mini disc, and then from there I'll see like if I can do stuff with it live, but a lot of kind of like moving things around until it doesn't sound sort of like what it was when I started with it. I like the fact that when you're playing and you, at a volume where you can sort of envelop people, I think that's, I don't know, you sort of have their, their attention 
completely whether they like it or not. Like they sort of are forced to pay attention for a little bit. Mm -hmm. 